My name is Johannes Walter and I'm a professor at Harvard Medical School. And in this short video, I want to tell you about a paper that we published recently in Molecular Cell, in which we used single molecule imaging to look directly at what happens when a replication machine or a replosome collides with a NIC in the template strand. So NICs are extremely abundant in mammalian cells and stabilizing NICs is the basis for many forms of chemotherapy. And it was previously already appreciated that when the replosome containing the CMG DNA helicase collides with a NIC, the NIC collapses into a so-called one-ended double-stranded DNA break. And we and others considered the possibility that when this happens, the CMG helicase with associated replication proteins might slide onto double-stranded DNA downstream of the NICs so that it could be recycled for replication restart after the break has been repaired. So to address this, Kyle Bertis, a postdoctoral fellow in my laboratory, used our favorite experimental system, which is Xenopus egg extracts, to address this question. And these extracts are special and very powerful because they will very efficiently copy any DNA that we add into the system. So what Kyle did was to take a long linear piece of double-stranded DNA and immobilize it in this stretched conformation in a microfluidic flow cell. And then he pumped in the frog egg extract together with fluorescently labeled CMG helicase. And he then used total internal reflection microscopy to look directly at the helicase uh, as it's undergoing replication. And when he looked on undamaged DNA templates, he saw that two helicases are assembled at an origin of replication and then travel away from the origin ahead of newly synthesized DNA, which is marked in blue. He then repeated the experiment in the presence of a Cas9 nicking enzyme that is fluorescently labeled with a different dye so that we would induce a nick in a particular location that we could actually mark in the microscope. And when he did this, he saw many fields of view where there are many uh, collisions between CMG helicases and these Cas9 nicking enzymes. And when he looks at particular instances of these collision events, he sees that CMG travels towards the Cas9 induced NIC. It pauses for a while, and then soon after the Cas9 dissociates, CMG also immediately dissociates from the DNA. And he could show that this dissociation is actually an active process because if he adds an inhibitor of a P97 ATPase that normally extracts ubiquitinated proteins from their local environment, he found that the CMG was not extracted and that it continued translocating along the DNA. So this implies that normally when CMG encounters a NIC in the strand here, that CMG travels onto double-stranded DNA, undergoes ubiquitilation, and then is extracted by the P97 ATPase. Now in uh, other experiments that are also in the paper, he found that when the NIC is in the other strand, namely in the leading strand template, that is the strand along which the CMG actually translocates, then CMG is also lost from the DNA. And that makes a lot of sense because CMG sim simply flies off the end of the broken strand. So really the upshot of our study is that when CMG helicases encounter NICs in the template strands, whether these are in the lagging strand template or in the leading strand template, the CMG dissociates either due to active removal, as in this case, or due to passive dissociation from the broken strand. And this really indicates that um, CMG cannot be recycled for replication restart, and that in order to restart replication, you would have to recruit 
a new DNA helicase once the uh, one-ended break has been fixed. So another really important conclusion from the study is that these NICs are uniquely toxic DNA lesions because they are the only lesions that we now know of that lead to immediate and inevitable dissociation of the CMG helicase together with its many associated proteins. Really, the power of the single molecule approach that we used was that we fluorescently labeled one particular component of the replosome, namely the CMG helicase and the one that we were most interested in. And so that allowed us to really follow the fate of that particular component after collision with these NICs and the template strands. Well, thank you very much for this opportunity to share our work.